An Australian politician, member of the South Eastern Metropolitan Region, Shadow Minister of Multicultural Affairs, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Inga Polish. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just taking my instructions. Could I acknowledge all of the distinguished guests and uh, obviously Fadi Zuki, uh, the president and uh, chairperson of the, uh, of the Chamber of Commerce, and congratulate his entire team on putting a, an absolutely wonderful event together. Everyone looks magnificent, the room looks great, and it's a great opportunity to celebrate all of the talent and the achievements of the, um, uh, of the Ch Chamber of Commerce. Could I also acknowledge my parliamentary colleague, um, my, uh, Michael Suka, Federal Member for Deakin and the Assistant Federal Treasurer of the Commonwealth of Australia, representing the Prime Minister. It's great to see you here and acknowledge, of course, your links to um, uh, uh, Lebanon, as well as uh, other, other, others as well in attendance. My parliamentary colleague, Marlene Carews, representing the Premier, Daniel Andrews. Nazia Lazma, OAM MP, my Upper House colleague um, and, um, and his wife. Great to see you here tonight as well. Um, Alistair Coe, uh, MP, Leader of the Opposition uh, of the ACT, my very good friend, uh, the Honourable Philip Ruddock. I didn't even realise that you were the Mayor of the Hornsby Shire and it's great to see you continue your political involvement. Um, the Honourable Steve Brax, former um, patron of uh, the Austra Australia Lebanon Cham Chamber of Commerce and Industry and of course former Premier of, of uh, Victoria. Uh, Excellency Glenn Miles, Excellency um, Al Khoury, the Honourable Ghassan um, Aktib, uh, a number of other members of the Diplomatic Corps who do a great job in supporting each other at various events, other political and uh, religious leaders, um, representatives of the Le Lebanese community in Victoria, media ladies and gentlemen. I'm to present an award uh, to a female businesswoman. So I thought I'd make a few remarks in relation to the importance of the women in our lives. My great um, uh, inspiration was very much my father who made a very courageous decision in relocating his family. His wife, at the time 34 years of age, his two small children, four suitcases from a, uh, a very difficult life in the former um, Yugoslavia, now Bosnia and Herzegovina, and he came by ship through the Suez Canal many years ago when I was a little girl. And he was a great inspiration. He was a great inspiration and rock of the family until his passing but a quiet achiever, the person who really made a difference in all of our lives, and I'm sure the same would apply to most of you here, are the women in our lives, are the mothers, the grandmothers, the sisters and the wives who keep everyone going, who are there to pick us up, love us, encourage us, who are there who love us from birth, forever, for eternity. And my mother's favorite saying was, children, small children are small problems, but big children are big problems. And at the age of 84, she continues to play a vital role in my family to encourage us all, irrespective of gender, male and female, to, our, to achieve our best. So I just wanted to pay tribute to all of those great women, the mothers, the grandmothers, the daughters, and encourage all of those women to pursue your dreams. We do live in this country where, of course, there should never be a ceiling, no matter what gender we are. If there is anywhere, any country in the world where we can succeed, it's this country. Women, indeed, can make a difference. Add to the depth and breadth of any organisation, whether it's parliament, whether it's business, whether it's a, whether it's a community event. And how can you gain insight into a demographic that is 52% of your market if they're not on your board, if they're not uh, in your, amongst your directors and if they're not in your parliaments. So women indeed should make a difference, do make a difference and, with, and it is our responsibility, each and every one of us, to support them, to encourage them so that they can do and achieve the very best that they can, their dreams, just like our fathers and our forefathers came here to achieve theirs. So all the very best of luck to those who've been nominated. Congratulations to those who will achieve uh, um, awards and to many of the others who perhaps may be unsung, but whose achievements will make a difference not only in their lives, but prove to be an inspiration in the lives of their family and other women as well. Congratulations and have a great successful night.
So I do have a further responsibility um, to present uh, the uh, Businesswoman's Award. Um, and on behalf of the state opposition and the leader, um, the Honourable Matthew Guy, I also extend his greetings, but I'd like to announce that the Women's Award goes to Mrs. Abla Ahmad OAM. Please make welcome to the stage the Honourable Marlene K. Roos, MP, Minister for Consumer Affairs, Gaming and Liquor Regulation, Minister for Local Government, Member for Corroyt, representing the Premier of Victoria, the Honourable Daniel Andrews, MP, also representing the Minister for Finance, Minister for Multicultural Affairs, Minister for Corrections, the Honourable Robin Scott, MP. Thanks everyone tonight for this beautiful gift. And I'm so happy to see you all here. And thank you very much. And let's hear a very big round of applause for a wonderful woman in business. Good evening, everybody. Um, those that don't know me, my name is Marlene K. Roos. I'm the Minister for Consumer Affairs, Gaming and Liquor Regulation and the Minister for Local Government. I'm here representing the Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, and the Minister for Multicultural Affairs, Robin Scott. It's an absolute pleasure to be here as a member of the Lebanese community and also a member of the Andrews Labor Government. And it's an absolute honour to be standing with a very important woman in our community. Everybody knows Auntie Abla. She's done an outstanding job and she's somebody that we are extremely proud of, as well as Fair Jizuki and the Chamber of Commerce. And being a member of the Lebanese community, I can say that I'm also very proud of former Premier Steve Brax, who's um, somebody that's well known and we all love. Yes. And of course, uh, Michael, Michael Suka, the Assistant Treasurer of, Victor of um, in, a, in the Parliament of um, Canberra or the Federal Parliament. And of course, my dear friend, um, the Honourable friend as well, um, Nazia Lazma, member of the Northern Metropolitan Region. I'm here representing Daniel Andrews, as I've said, and how wonderful it is to be in a country where we can all achieve what we want to do without any barriers whatsoever, irregardless of the size of our pocket, our, our race, our ethnicity, the colour of our skin. And this is something that none of us should take for granted. We should embrace this wonderful country and everything that it has to offer and give back whatever we can. And we're in Victoria, one of the most livable cities in the world, and it's been voted one of the most livable cities in the world seven years in a row, and that's because of our diversity, our culture, the sophistication that this wonderful city has, and of course, communities like this one and other communities. So I'd like to congratulate Fadi and the Chamber of Commerce for all the wonderful work that you do. May you continue to grow and flourish, and I hope that the Chamber grows from here on. Thank you all very much, and it's wonderful to be here.